champion, and he's been on quite a tear over the course of the last couple of Pro Tour seasons. Second year in a row on the team, and really this weekend for him is all about level five in addition to trying to win a world championship. So, now you started out pretty rough, right? I was four and four after day one. <laughs> four and four after day one. What happened? In, what happened? I went uh, three, two in standard. All right. I played against, I was playing red, green, snow, and uh, the mono red dragons from deck that a lot of the guys are doing well with yep. just ran me over. I had no, no chance almost in All that right. matchup. And then I won two in my first draft, which <laughs> wasn't wasn't exactly what I was planning to do. But, so you, you know. needed four at four and four. You needed to go on a run today in order to get the, your goal, which was level five, enough pro points to level up. Yeah, I needed a top 32, which would require me going seven to one on day two. <laughs> so how's it going so far? Um, five zero right or six zero, I guess right now. <laughs> six from needing to go seven zero. You put yeah. up. 7-1, you put up the 6-0. Huh? Yeah, so. And three of those wins have come with your take on Enchantress here in the uh, Legacy format. Yeah. Tell us about the deck. What you, would you put together here? Uh, basically, when I knew that we were going to need to play Legacy, I uh, searched for decks that had been doing well. And not even decks that had been doing well, decks that had top aided just to look at Legacy. And uh, sure. we figured that uh, uh, Threshold and Goblins were going to be the two most played decks, okay. along with Landstill. So I guess that'd be like the, the three decks we really wanted to beat. Sure. And uh, Enchantress actually doesn't really lose to Goblins. Like really? it's really lopsided. Okay. And uh, that we so we just basically spent time tuning in against the two blue decks, Threshold and and uh, and Landstill. Okay, so. so walk me through what you're trying to accomplish with this. Uh, basically, you, you want to get an Argothian Enchantress or an Enchantress Presence in play. Okay. Because uh, the deck doesn't really function without them. Sure. But once they're in play. Every non-land card except for Replenish draws you at least one card. And uh, over here, this is the section where uh, you stop them from killing you. Uh, okay, this is all main deck. Yeah, Elephant Grass is actually the card that makes the deck worse because it's, it's one mana and it almost shuts down Goblins. Like, it makes Goblin Pile Driver a joke right. and does shut down a lot of other decks like Icarid, which I played, sure, sure. and uh, the Breakfast deck. If, even if they're using Sujur Ghoul or the Kiki Jiki Sky Who's Hard Kill, right. either way, they can't kill you with that. And then you have Moat, which is pretty insane against Threshold. They okay. actually can't can't beat you if you resolve a Moat game one, usually. So you're going to draw some cards. They can't kill you. And then how do you choose to actually win the game with this version? <laughs> There's only actually two ways to win. Uh, Sacred Mesa or Words of War. Okay. Uh, the words is if you have a bunch of enchantresses out, you can play an enchantment, replace all your draws, and then you know kill them. Don't That's not, sure. generally how you win. But the mesa is good if you draw a Sarah Sanctum, because you can make like eight Pegasus or six a turn. And they're gonna have so many sickness, but yeah, thanks to the mode or the elephant. Grass, and the mesa is good okay. even if you're not gonna kill them right away, because it's actual action card in and of itself. Whereas the words isn't really that hot without an enchantress out. Fair. So so far so good. Yeah, so now, far. What do, you, what do you think of legacy in general? Uh, I think it's it's a very diverse format, and it, it would be nice to see it explored a little more. Putting it a day in the World Championships is a good step, but uh, a lot of people aren't going to have the resources or time to devote to really testing it well. Okay. I mean, I think a lot of people opted to play Threshold or Landstill, and they're good decks, but I'm sure that there's better to be found. Like okay. It's very wide open. So three, three rounds in, can you tell us what matchups you faced so far today? Sure. I played a Threshold round one. Uh, and then I played Icarid round two, and then this last round I played against uh, Sea Stompy, which is the mono blue deck with Sea Drakes and Serendipifrits and Trinket Mages. What? <laughs> well, Sea Drake. Sea Drake. It, it's from Portal. It's a blue and two for a four-three flyer. Blue and two for four-three flyer. When it comes okay, into play, some kind of drawback. When it comes into play, return two target lands you control to owner's hands. But okay. if you only have one land in play, you don't have to return any. Oh, it fizzles. So, so you can yeah. target two lands. So, so their, their goal is to play for three for no drawback. Yeah, their goal is because they have four ancient tomb, four city traders, four chrome mocks, is to play wow. a turn one C Drake, turn two like GT equip, or wow. something along those lines. Is that good? And actually, the deck's pretty good. It, uh, it's it's really fast. It can get really really fast starts. Huh. It has force wheels. It also plays Chalice of the Void, which is very yeah. good in this format. Sure, sure. Because every deck. Their flash points one or two mana. Okay. Like, all right. Well, so. does it really also play Mold Drifter? Uh, yeah, actually, the, the, the recent lists have all been playing Mold Drifter, because the deck generates so much colorless mana with the tombs and cities and Cloud Fairies oh. to untap them that okay. Mold Drifters, and plus the deck plays Sword of Fire Eyes and Jite, so it just needs a guy. <laughs> it, all it needs is a guy to equip onto. Wow, such a lot of fairies. Nice. Mm -hmm. Who knew? <laughs> yeah. Legacy said, Legacy, I've been watching too. There's a lot of crazy. There's yeah. a lot of, there's certainly a lot of dark confidants and tops and counterbalance. Tarmogoyfs. <laughs> Tarmogoyfs is everywhere, plowshares. So, I mean, you see some of the regular hits, but there's a lot of room too. I've seen multiple <laughs> takes on Enchantress, I've seen some, it's just some craziness. So, I just think cool it's format. funny when all my opponents have picked up at least two of my cards to read them this yeah, so far. <laughs> yeah, and with a format like that, it opens things up for somebody who's got a different take, somebody to put some preparation into 
just you know build a better mousetrap. Well, so. One one card I wanted to ask about here is Replenish. You had a really nice play last round with Replenish. Can you, can you talk about that play? Yeah, my opponent had played a Chalice of Void for three, and. Uh, I don't have a way to get rid of it except a one aura of silence, which oh, both your victory costs three. Cost three, and both right? my win conditions cost three. Nice. So I actually uh, discarded the aura of silence to pay for confinement, then replenished it back to kill the chalice. Nice. Although uh, I could actually even just cast it into the chalice, then do that, and even draw cards off the enchantresses, right, right, right. which is nice. But uh, but yeah, chalice of void is a, is a pretty good card. All right. Well, thanks, Luis. That's like two rounds to go, and one more win gets you level five with top yeah. thirty-two. Can you still make top eight? Um, I don't know. Uh, X it, there's an outside four, shot. So <laughs> yeah. looks like the cut's going to be somewhere among the X and fours, but you don't like your tiebreaker? I started out uh, with not a very winning record, so it's likely I'll finish somewhere in the top 16 if I, if I win out. And what do you need to do tomorrow in the uh, team tournament? Uh, we'll have to see when the dust settles, I guess, after today. Okay. I suspect we're going to have to have a relatively good draft record because individually we, we have some ground cover, I think, especially against like some of the other teams that are, who are, have members who are doing really well. All right. Well, good luck the rest of the way and good luck tomorrow. Thanks. Brian and I will be here watching as the <laughs> individual competition plays out, team competition tomorrow. Stay tuned to the Tournament Center. That's great. Thanks.